at the age of 18, aren't you a bit too young to be writing a book on the coronavirus outbreak? This was the interesting question that I was asked in one of my recent interviews after authoring Pandemic 2020, Rife of the Virus, which is not just my second novel at the age of 18, but also world's first fiction novel based on the coronavirus outbreak that we all are still fighting against. Because in the world of today, which is of course so much advanced and so much modernized, for some people, the focus is not on the title of the youngest, but rather on my tag of being too young to be doing something. The United Nations defines the youngsters or the youth of today as somebody who falls within the age group of 14 to 24. And being a youngster myself, I can completely understand and connect with the creatively ambitious, socially connected and mentally headstrong mindset of all the fellow youngsters listening to me right now and all around the world. But on all this potential, on all this ambition hits the sledgehammer. The sledgehammer of youthism, or as I like to call it, reverse ageism. Now, ageism is a term which is quite known, right? We all know what it means. It is basically the discrimination of a person or prejudicing of a person based on how old they are or their age in general. That is what the term ageism refers to. But the more horrendous term over here, especially in the world of today, is that of youthism or reverse ageism, which is what my talk is all about. Basically, youthism is just the contrary of what we have just spoken about. Youthism is the prejudicing or discrimination of a youngster based on how young they are. Because even after our nation in particular is going to become the youngest one by the end of this year, and in fact the world as a whole also majorly depends on the youth of today because they are in fact the torch bearers of our global future, still, to some degree, being a youngster myself, what I feel is that the youth on a global level are generally, I would say majorly, I can call it, they are deemed as a little bit too lazy, a little bit too snobby, a little bit too cranky, or just too much addicted to the technology, which I believe every person is in the world of today, irrespective of how old or young they are, or my personal favorite, and the worst of all, I would say, not experienced enough. The youngsters of today are in most of the cases deemed too inexperienced to be speaking about the social issues, speaking about the cultural problems, let alone working on them. This is the sheer reality right in front of us that most of us do not even acknowledge. I remember that odd day from 2018, just two years back, when I was 16 years old and I was sitting right next to my laptop with a now completed manuscript of my internationally acclaimed and awarded debut novel, A Celebration in Tribulation, which of course eventually it turned out to be. But back then when the book wasn't even published and I was this simple 16 year old guy with an ambition to get his first book published at a young age, I wasn't sure what it was going to become, right? It was sort of a make it or break it phase for me on a social level as well on a psychological level. So the response from this literary platform that I had contacted the previous day did come, the screen of my laptop did pop up and I must have jumped in exhilaration and excitement. But when I opened that email from this literary platform that I had contacted, it read, Dear Yash, we are very excited to receive your submission and we are glad to see your passion towards literature as well. But seeing that you are just 16 years old, we are not absolutely sure whether you have any sort of clarity or idea about the subject matter or not. It was shocking and of course it must have been saddening back then. But all I remember responding to that particular youthism driven email was that I'm glad to receive your response and thankful for your consideration. But did you even read my manuscript? Did you even read what I had written? And that was it. Of course, I never received a response after that. But in retrospect, now when I look back at that particular day, I feel that if I personally as a 16 year old back then had given in to the barricades or should I say the outdated ideology of youthism and reverse ageism just because somebody out there in the world did not even check out how much potential I had or how much capacity I had just because I was 16 years old, 
I would have never started to live the journey that I am living right now or be on the international platforms that I am right now as an international youth mentor or a mental health awareness advocate where I get to not just address but even guide and mentor thousands of youngsters every day around the world. The truth is that we feel as if these barricades of, we can say, discrimination or prejudices based on the age, caste, creed, color, race, gender, whatever it might be, they are only present in the developing countries. That is not true, I can assure you. If you research about these discriminatory topics to some degree, especially about youthism, I would say, the age-driven prejudices in our society, you will understand that this youthism or the barricades of ageism is just like some sort of vehicle, I would say, which is not fueled by the cultures of a community whatsoever, but it is entirely driven by the stereotypical ideology, or should I call it, the outdated stereotypical ideology of the very society that we are living in right now. You will find that in the most developed countries, a company, uh, like a hypothetical example, I would say, a company which might have somewhere around 50,000 employees and at least 40% out of which might be youngsters, the stereotypical ideology of youthism can in fact result into intergenerational communication gaps, work issues and eventually into billion dollar problems annually every year. And in the developing countries like ours itself, you will find that the youthism or the age-based discrimination can result into cruel scenarios like human trafficking, human cruelty, human abuse, or much more horrendous than we can possibly ever imagine. You wouldn't find these barricades of youthism or the age-based discrimination only in the developing countries like India, China, or Brazil, but also in the most developed countries like the US, the Japan or even Canada. But if this is the reality of the world of today, the sheer reality as I call it, then another reality that we need to address is that of the solution. Because whenever there is some or the other social issue, personally being an optimist myself, I always try to look for the solutions for them. And when it comes to the barricades of youthism that the overall development and growth of our youngsters is inhibited by, is stopped by or obstructed by, the best solution, according to me personally, is that of the rule of 4A. Now, my rule of 4A is all about these four words that simply define to us how we can tackle the barricades of youthism or reverse ageism, the age-based discrimination in the developing world of today. Or should I say, not just tackle, but even eradicate them completely out of this world. The first A is all about acknowledging. I can either say that climate changes and the environmental issues are a concern for the society, or I can say that the climate change and the environmental concerns are also a problem for me personally and I as an individual need to take a step for it. I need to start acknowledging that it is not just the society as a whole that is being impacted but I personally, my growth, my life, myself is being impacted by that particular social issue. That is what we need with the youthism as well. We see youngsters saying that, you know, youth in general is subjugated, youth in general is subjected to discrimination of some sort or the other or whatever it might be. But how many of them personally, individually turn up to say that, yes, I have been affected by it and I need to take a step for it. This is what we need to remember when it comes to the social issues like the age-based discrimination or youthism in particular that we need to start acknowledging the effects of it on us as an individual and start working on that personally. Secondly, adapt. Whenever we are talking about any sort of workplace or the academic place or wherever people are coming together and congregating to get things done, we have to understand that there are going to be people from different walks of life, different categorizations of life, different generations and whatnot. And when different generations come together, we also have to remember that every generation communicates in a different manner, interacts in a different manner, works in a different manner and functions in a different manner as well. 
the youngsters cannot simply go on to say that the elder ones have no idea about the modern technology or they are not in touch with the modern world and the elder ones cannot simply go on to say that the youngsters are too lazy, too snobby or way too addicted to their mobile phones. We need people from different generations to collaborate as well as adapt to one another's differences or should I call it as the uniqueness within each generation. Whenever people are coming together, we need to start adapting to one another's uniqueness, whether it is about the work ethics or it is about the communication skills or whatever it might be. Let us try to adapt to one another. The third A is all about appreciation. I was going through the interview, this interview of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is one of the youngest representative of the Congress in the United States. And it was wonderful. I, I truly felt, I would say, inspired by the way in which she was speaking about the social issues. But when I scrolled in the comment box of that video, what I found out was that 10% of the comments were in fact about appreciating that we have this youngster who is trying to do something but the remaining 90% were just about let's say bashing her or trolling her or saying that she is too young to be speaking about these social issues in the first place. This is what we need to start working on as well. We need people from all walks of life to not just uh, we can say acknowledge or accept but also appreciate the fact that the youth of today they might not be very experienced but they at least are trying to explore this world they at least are trying to make this world better than it is right now or it has ever been in past so we need to start appreciating the steps taken by our youth and the fourth a is all about affirming as a youngster, your duty is not just to argue about the fact that the people are prejudicing on you or they are discriminating you or whatever it might be. As a youngster, it is also your duty to prove that you are worth it. Because I, as an 18-year-old, whenever I get on a stage and I see audience members who might be twice or thrice as old as I am right now, who might be in their 30s or 40s or even 70s or 80s or 90s, I do not start arguing with them when they roll their eyes when they see me for the first time. Rather, I prove my potential or should I say, I affirm about my potential and my caliber and my experience through my voice, through my words, through my action. That is what you need to do as well. Stop arguing about what is right and wrong all the time. Try to prove about yourself as well through your works and through your voice. We need to understand that from this point onwards, whether the youngsters who are listening to me right now, they give in to the barricades of youthism or they fight against it. That is totally in their hands. And you also need to understand that the youth of today can create a huge difference if they come together to stand for what is right and what is wrong in this world. So in the end, I would like to quote Mary McLeod Bethune, who once rightly remarked, we have a powerful potential in our youth and we must have the courage to change old ideas and practices so as to direct it towards good ends.